We want to welcome everyone into the house of the Lord. Invite you to stand with us as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. In his house. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise, treasures of faith, I never know. If you came along, put me back together. Every desire is now satisfied here in love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Cause I know. seeing y'all here and braving the weather that we've been having amen so there's nothing better than Jesus Christ amen and everything he's done for us I want to give you a word word here from scripture and it says it's Psalm 98 
verse 4. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. And we need to be lifting up our voice and giving God all the praise and glory for everything that he's done for us. Amen? So let's go ahead and invite the Holy Spirit in at this time. Father God, just thank you for allowing us to gather, Lord. Thank you for the gifts of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father God, just have your way in this place today. Just move. Just touch those lives that need to be touched. Let your anointing be with Pastor Gene as he delivers your message to us. And Father God, open our hearts, our minds, and our ears to hear what it is that you're saying to us. To help us be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. In the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. And everyone said, Amen. We're in the house of the Lord this morning. This is a place of freedom. Amen. There's a calm that covers me when I kneel down at your feet. It's a place of healing. It's a place where I find freedom. There's a place my eyes can't see. My spirit wants to be. It's a place of healing. It's a place I love.
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has no part in me. And the Bible says from that moment forward, many of his disciples left. And then he turned to the twelve and he said, will you also leave? And they said, where can we go? You have the words of life. You know, there's sometimes that God says some things that just don't make no sense. But there's nobody else that we can trust, nobody else that we can turn to. This song says, He gives life, He is love, He is the fountain of living water. There is nothing that exists in you and exists in this world without coming from Him. Amen. Nothing good. So as we sing this song, I want us to sing this song with understanding. I want us to open our hearts this morning and just sing that you are the one that gives life. That great are you, Lord. Amen. That we serve a great God. We 
serve an awesome God. You know, Moses said to the children of Israel, which other nation has a God like our God? Which other nation has a father like our father? All the other nations, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, they were all serving idols and strange gods of gold and silver. But we serve a God that's great, a God that's awesome, the one that created everything that we see, the one that delivered our soul from the bondhold of sin, the one that cleanses from all our righteousness. Who is a God like our God? Who is a king like our king? Who is a maker like our maker? Come on, just worship God this morning. We worship you, Jesus. We say that you are the great God. There is nobody on this earth that's compared to you. There is no other thing, oh God, that can be compared to you, Jesus. Search no longer, couldn't find anyone. Under the rock, over the mountain, there is no God like our God. Come and worship him this morning. As we sing, great are you, Lord, I want you to shout it out. I want you to jump on your feet. I want you to wave your hands. We serve a God that is great. We serve a God that is awesome. We serve a God that is mighty. We serve a God that is powerful. Hallelujah. Come on. All right, let's sing all the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great. All the earth. worship right there don't get you going. I don't know what will. Amen? Man, when he goes to beating on them drums, it makes me want to just jump up and run around. Amen? Amen? Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's good to be here today. Good to be able to come here today. Make our own choices about coming. Amen? You know, if you're a first-time visitor here, we've got a card and the seat back in front of you is called a welcome home card. If you'll fill that out and turn it at the welcome center, we got a bag of goodies for you. And, the elder, and right across from the welcome center is the information center. And that's got a lot of literature and stuff that we're doing at the church, what we're doing, what we're trying to do. And we need help 
in all areas. And they've got it all laid out there where you can walk up there and figure out if there's a spot you want to help us with. Just sign up for it. And we'll put you to work. I guarantee you we'll put you to work. Amen? We're always needing help uh, to get everything done that we're trying to get done in this church. You know, if you've been here a couple of times and you don't have a home church, come back and join us. You know, when we first started, Pastor Gene always said, if you come here three times, you're family. We still look at it like that. You know, if uh, you have a home church and you're just visiting, when you get back to your home church, get behind your pastor's vision. Get involved with what, 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 what he's got going on with that church and support your pastor, support your church board and, and your fellow members and your church leaders. Get behind them, man. Do whatever you can do to help get the word out about Jesus and what he can do for you, what he will do for you. Amen? By right, this time, we do tithes and offerings. Hallelujah! Amen! Give! And it shall be given. Amen? You know, I talk about tithes all the time. This is tithes and offerings. Today I want to talk about offerings. Because sometimes people get confused about tithes and offerings and they think it's the same thing. And it's not. Tithes is what you're, what you're supposed to give 10% of your first fruit to the Lord. And the Bible says if you don't do that, you're stealing from God. Amen. All right, now offering. An offering is what you give above that 10%. It's what you do in faith. And it takes a lot of faith to step out and give again after you don't give that 10%. You got to believe that you're going to receive. You got to believe. You got to have faith knowing that by giving an offering, by helping other people out, by meeting other people's needs, you're going to be blessed. Amen. I got a scripture I want to read to you today. Chapter 15. In, Matt, in Romans, verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Amen. See, that's where, that's where everybody gets the problem, is that not pleasing ourselves, meeting someone else's needs instead of our own needs. You know, we think of laying down our lives for someone in the terms of dying. You know, that's what Jesus did. He loved us so much he gave his life so we can live. But now he asks us to lay down our lives in a different way. He asked us to show our love. Not by dying for one another, but by living for one another. Amen. Amen. Give me your life. Giving your lives by praying for someone. Giving yourselves with love and understanding. Laying down your own selfish needs to meet the needs of another. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not please ourselves. Brothers and sisters, there's a lot of people with needs. And until we become unselfish enough to put someone else's needs before ours, we're not going to be able to help them. But when we step out and do that, we can help them. We can move this country. We can change this country. We can change people's lives because Jesus is going to be involved in it. Amen. Father God, bless these offerings. Bless these tithes, Father. Bless the giver, the receiver, the hearer reader and the doer of your word today father we lift you up we give you all the praise we give you all the glory in jesus mighty name we pray amen
suffering I do Love its work I do going to take some time, but I'm okay with that. Those of you that have a need, I, I don't know what it could be. I'm not going to try to guess, but you know, because the Bible teaches us that, that this, that he knows what we have need of. That's what it says. He knows what we have need of before we could even think to ask him. So that tells me that you know if you have a need or not. And I want to say this to you. If you have a need, healing, restoration, whatever it is, would you stand? I was, 
I was going to have you come down front, but I don't think I will now. I want you to, I want you to be encouraged this morning. That's just the devil. You know, when, when, when he was thrown out of hell, he went right through a sound machine in a church house on his way. Okay. encouraged this morning in this. The Word of God teaches us that He will, 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 not might, not maybe, He will supply all of our needs. And I believe that. You know why I believe He's still a healer? You know why I believe he, he's, he's all of the things that He said He is? You know why I believe that? Because if I can't, then I can't believe he's my Savior. We can't pick and choose what we want to believe out of the Word of God. It's all of it or none of it. Friends, he knows your need today. And I want to encourage your faith today. Stir that faith up. It doesn't take much of it. Just a little. But let's believe God to meet your needs. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, I thank you today. Lord, I thank you that you hear us. Lord, that it's your pleasure you want to communicate with us. Lord, I thank you today that you are still the great physician. Lord, I speak to these, these bodies that are in here, and I command them now to line up with the Word of God and be healed and be whole in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, there are those that, that their joy has waned. Lord, they feel like they've drifted. They, they feel kind of hopeless today. And Lord, I pray that right now, God, that you would breathe that joy back into them. Lord, give them that joy of their salvation, Lord. Encourage us today. Restore us today. Renew us today. God, would you revive us today? Lord, would you give us all that joy unspeakable and full of your glory today? Help us, God. Help us today. Help us today. Help us, I pray. In the mighty name, in the miraculous name, in the marvelous name, in the strong name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone that agrees with me, would you say amen before you're seated? Now, before you're seated, hang on, hang on, hang on. Before you're seated, we always say we're a happy church, we're a family church. Why don't you get around and greet your church family this morning before you're seated?
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Let us bless his holy name. Would you give this worship team a, a hand, please? It's good to be in God's house. There was a young man named Teddy, or young boy, I should say. His mother passed away when he was in the second grade. And after his mother's death, Teddy shut down mentally and emotionally. And in his second grade class, when it came time for the annual Christmas party that every second grade class has. Teddy realized that he didn't have any money to get his teacher a gift. So all he could do was think about his mother's things and what his mother might have had that his teacher would like. So he began to rummage through her things and he found something to give his teacher, Mrs. Thompson. And at the party, all of the other students had their presents wrapped in bright paper, shiny paper, and bows, and all Teddy had to put his gift for Mrs. Thompson in was a brown paper sack. And when the other students that were in the classroom seen this, and Teddy not being the cleanest kid in the class, when they seen his gift, they all began to laugh at him and make fun of him. And at this time, Mrs. Thompson knew that she had to do something to rescue her student. Amen. Amen. And she did. Mrs. Thompson stepped in and thanked little Teddy for his gift. And as a result of that, ten years later, a letter came to Mrs. Thompson that said this. It said, thank you for the way that you responded to my gift in the brown paper sack. It changed my life. Four years after that, another letter came to her. Teddy had graduated the university at the top of his class. Four years after that, she received another letter inviting her to his graduation to receive his doctorate. He had become Dr. Teddy. The next spring, another letter came. He was getting married. And he asked Mrs. Thompson if she would set in where his mother sat. And she did. And she wore the bracelet, the broken bracelet that Teddy gave her in the second grade. You see, sometimes it's not what we're looking at, it's what we see that matters the most. And today what I want to talk to you about is this, what do you see? Is it a brown paper sack that you see or is it someone's life or someone's future? that you could potentially change by the way that you respond or react. John chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 says this. It says, sometimes after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. A great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs. How many of you know that, that people follow the signs and wonders? They saw the signs that he had performed by healing the sick. And then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. And when Jesus looked up, he saw 
a great crowd coming toward him. And he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Lord, I thank you for your word today. And I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. Lord, I ask you that you would help me to communicate this in a way that would be pleasing to you. And God, help us not to be just hearers of your word, but Lord, would you help us to be doers, diligent doers of your word, I pray. You see, all that Jesus was doing, he was just trying to simply get away for a staff retreat. As you had just heard and heard, Jesus had been ministering and been doing things for quite some time, and, and he thought, well, we can just get away for a, a few days. Just to, to have a staff retreat, him and his disciples and those that were following him closely. Maybe to spend some time in prayer. Maybe he wanted to cast a little vision, or maybe he just wanted to simply rest. But halfway up the hillside, as the story goes, he's, he's walking away from the sea, headed up, and he looks back and he sees the multitude of people. It's thousands of people. And today I want to share with you quickly four things that were seen that day. Four things. Simple message, simple application, something that we can do regularly, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Four things. Here's the first thing. The first thing that was seen that day was this. Jesus saw a need and opportunity. John chapter 6 verse number 5 says this. When Jesus looked up, he saw a great crowd coming toward him. You know, at that moment, he had two ways he could have reacted. One way was that he could have thought, oh, here it goes again. He could have rebuked them. He could have told them, don't come near him. But to finish the verse, it said, and he said to Philip, Philip, where are we going to buy enough bread to feed all these people? You see, Jesus sees all the people and he thinks this. He thinks, I bet they're hungry. They look hungry. Man, we hadn't been by a fast food joint in you know, a couple of hours. I know that some of them are hungry. You see, friends, when, when Jesus looks at you, he sees your need. And this is exactly what's happening here is Jesus sees an opportunity to meet the needs of these people. And here's what I know. Jesus will meet you right at your point of need. You know, one of the things that I'm thankful about with the Lord is this, that he promises to meet our needs. I'm thankful for that. There is no telling how much junk I would have if he met all of my wants. Oh, y'all acting wholly indignified now. Come on. You can be driving a great vehicle, one that ain't nothing wrong with, don't even smoke, spit, or sputter. And you're driving and you pass up that dealership and you're like, oh, Jesus, I need that. Huh? If you're like me, when you go by the tractor place, it's... It's amazing how men's interests change as we get older. Seems like the toys get more expensive. You see, Jesus will certainly meet you at our point of needs. And the Bible tells us that we have not because we've asked not. You see, so often we have a a problem and it's called self-doubt. We we doubt that we're worthy. We doubt that we're good enough. And that's not the case. You are. When you become a child of the king, you are, the Bible says, a joint heir with Christ or a joint heir to the throne. And you have opportunity for anything. Amen. 
Jesus will go out of his way to meet you at your point of need. What does that mean? Remember the story in the Bible, and, and it's in uh, John chapter 4. It says, one day he stops at a well, and there's a woman there. And this is not a good thing because a man and a woman are not supposed to be alone at the well. And he tells her something that is profound that she did not yet understand. He says that I have water that you know not of. I have water that if you drink this water, you will never thirst again. This was a lady who was in a predicament, in a problem, in a situation, and she needed that living water. And he went out of his way to meet her at her point of need. Another story is this. There was another lady. The religious crowd had, had caught her. And, and, and it, the Bible says that all of these men were gathered around her ready to stone her to death because she was caught in adultery. And the Bible says that Jesus knelt down and began to draw in the dirt. You know what I think he was doing there? And this is just my opinion. It may not be right, but I like it. I think he was looking at Gene, and he wrote down all of Gene's sins. And then he looked at Bill, and he wrote down all of Bill's sins and Bob's and everybody's. And all of a sudden, the Bible says in this, in this story, talking about Jesus going to meet her at her point of need, he, he went to her rescue. And the Bible says that all of these men began to drop the rocks that they had and leave. You see, it's, it's amazing how we as believers, we want to point our finger at everybody else, but we forget about those pointing back at us. Friends, Jesus will go out of his way to meet you at your point of need. The religious crowd wanted to stone her, and Jesus came to her rescue. And I'm glad that Jesus sees our needs and doesn't want to throw stones. It's amazing how Jesus is. He's from peace be still to pick up your mat and walk. Jesus sees our needs. Jesus doesn't always respond to our needs immediately. But he always does eventually. It's amazing. We, we go up to the altar of prayer. And when one knee goes down, the other one goes down. And this other one's coming back up. And we, we're, we're upset because, because God didn't, when our little two-touch kneel down coming up, God hasn't yet answered our prayers. You see, the truth is, until your answer comes, you need to keep praying. And it's no fun, but it's the truth. And friends, I, I want to encourage you today in this. Until your answer comes, keep praying. And I want to encourage you in this. Keep praying till your answer comes. Jesus doesn't always respond to our needs immediately, but he will respond eventually let's look at what others saw that day here's number two philip one of the disciples philip saw a cost when you're a banker or treasurer first thing you want to know is how much does it cost How much is it a month? He saw the cost. John 6 and 7 says this. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Jesus saw a need and oh, Phil, he seen the cost. Philip's like, Jesus, do you realize you want to feed all of these people, which I don't even like half of them, but that's beside the point. You want to feed all of these people. 
a barbecue dinner, do you know how much it's going to cost? You see, the area that they were in when this story was taking place is the area where Philip's hometown is. So he knew all the restaurants, he knew all the deals, he knew all the family packs that you could buy to feed a large crowd. So he's already calculated the cost. Do you wonder why Jesus turned and asked him that? You ever thought about that part of the story in, in, in the verse I just read to you? It says, it's going to cost more than a half year's wages just to get everybody a cracker or a bite. I believe this. I know, I know this. The Bible says that Jesus was testing Philip why would Jesus test Philip like this he wanted to see where his heart was at he wanted to see where his faith was at and, and that's what I want to ask you today where is your heart today where is your faith today when you when you ask him for a need is your faith followed by your actions or are your actions followed by your faith You see, far too often we pray in a manner like this. Lord, if it be your will. Can I tell you, for you to be healthy, for you to be well, for you to be prosperous, for you to be happy, for you to be joyful, that is all the will of God. Lord, if it be your will, then make me whole. No, it's his will that you do be whole. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. Philip, but Philip is he's he's just like a lot of us. We always seem to be more concerned with how much it's going to cost than meeting someone's need. Well, Lord, you know, you know, I'm saving for that such and such. And I know there's a big need there. So, you know, they really need, they really need our help. But, but Lord, you know I'm, I'm saving for something else because you put that on my heart. It's amazing. This isn't in my notes, so this little spot's going to be free here. It's amazing how our wallets are connected to our heart. It's like a vein that runs down. I don't know where you carry your wallet, but I carry mine here. So can't no pickpockets get me. <laughs> but it's amazing how that is so connected. Well, Lord, I'd help. You, you know I would. But I only need 108 more dollars to get that new fishing pole that I've been saving for. Can I remind you of something that's in the Word of God? He says, those that bless others will be blessed. He says, give, and it shall be given back to you. Those who refresh others will be refreshed. It's amazing at how often we get captivated by the cost instead of concerned about the need maybe you need to write that down somewhere I've never heard anybody say that not even me friends it's important that we be concerned about the needs of others even more so than our own needs thank you for the resounding amens I'll go to point number three Maybe that, that wallet's attached to your ears, ears too, and they just closed them just then. Number three, Andrew saw limitations. John 6, verses 8 and 9 says this. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. 
said, here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Andrew's like, there is no way we can split this boy's lunch up and do any good. He sees the limitations by the little sack lunch. And so often, we're believing God for something, but we're limited by what we see. Friends, your limitations are self-inflicted. I can hear Andrew saying, Jesus... Me and you are buddies, right? You know I love you. I've, I've been walking with you. I've been, you know, we've, we've, you've been teaching me all these things. And, and we've been all over the country. I've seen all the things that you've done. But hold on a minute. All we got is this. And Jesus, did, did you look at all those people? They're all hungry. And all we have is this little boy's sack lunch. And, and, and Andrew's like, he had great doubt, not great faith. 5,000 people, Jesus. 5,000 people, Jesus. 5,000 people, Jesus. You see, we're, we, because of our mindset, we want to attach our limitations to Jesus. And Jesus is wanting to get wanting to have his mindset in us to where we see no limitations anymore. Let's look at how God will exceed our limitations to meet our needs. Are you ready? I got one great story I want to share with you. You see, in the days of old, in the Old Testament days, if a man died with debt, the one that is owed money has the right, by law, by the laws of those days, to take whatever they wanted to repay the debt, to take whatever they wanted from the man who died, whether it be house, spouse, kids, livestock, whatever it took. But look at this, Second Kings, talking about how God will meet our limitations or exceed our expectations. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, it says this. It says, The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elijah, Your servant, my husband, he's dead. And you know that he, he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. They're going to have to work off the debt. And Elijah replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me what you do have. You see, and I think this is a great part of, of the story that we always overlook. He said, tell me what you do have. You see, we always want to tell God what we do not have. But church, it's time that we start looking at what we do have. It says, your servant has nothing at all. She said, Except a small jar of olive oil. And Elijah said, well, give me some spices and some bread. He's just going to dip it in there. That's not what he said. Look what he said. He said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for a few. Get all that you can. Then go inside and shut the door behind you. Why does it say that shut the door behind you? I think it's because it's to keep the naysayers out. 
What are you doing, lady? Have you lost your mind? I know your husband died. I know that they're fixing to come get you two boys, and you're going to be here all alone. What, what are you doing? He said, shut the door behind you, and you and your sons pour, pour oil into all the jars as each is filled. Put it to one side. She left him, shut the door behind her and her sons, and they brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring i'm telling you god will go out of his way to meet our needs and when oh look, look at this when all the jars were full when there was not a jar left she said to her son bring me another one but he replied there ain't no more then the oil stopped flowing she went and told the man of god and he said go look how god is look Go and sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what's left. Not only did he meet their needs, but he gave them more than enough. So let's look at the assembly line that they created that day. It took a jar. I can see it on the table here. And she's standing at the end. There's one brother sliding a jar under the one she's pouring. And then the other brother's probably catching it there, boxing it up, boxing it up, boxing it up, boxing it up until they run out of jars. Had they had a, a dump truck load of jars, they'd have still kept filling up. That, that oil would have not run out. So they'd put the oil in the box, and guess what happened? They ran out of jars. But here's what I think. After they paid their debt, they still had oil. Enough to live on. The Bible doesn't say how long, but I think it's this. It was enough that she could raise them two boys until they was ready to get out of the house. Friends, when we give God a little bit, he he has the ability to make it grow. Catch this. The jars came from the neighbors, but the oil came from God. He has no limits. He has no limitations. Man will always have limitations, but God does not. They even had leftovers. I just want you to remember something. The only reason God is limited is because of your doubt. And I'm going to close with this. Number four. Talking about things that were seen that day. The boy saw a miracle. You see, God can take our little bit and make a lot. And let's be honest. I just want to be real honest with you today. This is a cute story, right? One little sack lunch versus thousands of people. Is that really even possible? How do you think the boy, the boy that that gave his his sack lunch, how do you think he told that story for the rest of his life? How do you think he lived for the rest of his life? Do you think there was ever any doubt in his mind that when, when the Lord asked him for something that he wouldn't give it? Because of the miracle that he had seen that day. Here's the truth. Whatever we give Jesus, whatever we put in the Lord's hands, he will multiply to meet the needs of others. Question. I want you to think about this. What's in your bag? Is it exhaustion? Is it defeat? Is it broken dreams? Is it worry? Is it pain? Is it heartache? Is it divorce? What's in your bag? Because I want to encourage you to give it to Jesus. Give it to him. Let him take it away. Would you give your bag to Jesus? You have two choices. You can either hang on to it 
or you can let Jesus have it. But here's what I know, friend. If we hold on to it, it's all we'll ever be. But if we'll give it away, God will change our lives for the rest of our lives. Just like Mrs. Thompson's reaction to Teddy's gift in that little bag changed his life. Friends, if whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you have, if you will give it to Jesus, it'll change your life. Jesus will make a difference in your life. And I've thought about how to end this. This is the way I want to end it. You know what your needs are. You know what your issues are. You know the areas that the Lord's dealing with you in. We don't have to guess that because you know. Would you surrender those things to the Lord today? Before you leave this place, give it all to Him. And, and, and when you give it all to Him, leave it with Him. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. And Lord, I want to say thank you for your love for us. Lord, your word tells us that you know what we have need of before we could even think to ask you. That's what you say. Lord, we need you now more than ever. Some need salvation today. Some need reconciliation today. You know what we need. And Lord, would you help us today to give it all to you? Friends, while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I'm going to ask you some questions. Please be honest. My first question is this. How is your relationship with the Lord Jesus? Would you say, Pastor, I need to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. I need to invite him into my heart and into my life. Ask him to forgive me of my sins. Is that you? I want to see your hand. be you. Say, Pastor, there's some things in my life that I know are displeasing to the Lord. And I've gotten so comfortable with them. And I struggle with them. letting them go. Pray for me. Is that you? There's hands all over the house. Thank you for being honest. You can put your hands back. Maybe this is you. You say, Pastor, I struggle with generosity. And I want to be more generous like the Lord wants us to. I struggle with this area. Is that you, friend? I want to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray, and I want all of you to say this prayer with me, please. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, I realize that I am a sinner, 
in need of a Savior. And Lord, today, I'm asking you to come into my heart, to come into my life. Forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. And Lord, help me to serve you with all of my future. In Jesus' name. Father, you've seen the hands that were lifted up before you, Lord, that struggle. Lord, I ask that you would help us all in these areas that we struggle in. Lord, help us to be more obedient to you and your word. God, help us to keep you first. Lord, help us to be those that pray without ceasing. Help us, Lord, to be generous as you would have us to be generous. And Lord, above all else, would you draw us closer to you. And Lord, help us to draw closer to each other. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, I want you to know this before we go. Come on up here. Remember this. If God be for us, then nothing can stand against us. You remember that. And you remember this, that your best days are ahead. You see, God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. And God wants to use you. You say, well, I don't know how to do nothing. Yes, you do. This is not the only ministry at this church. This is a lot harder than it looks. But also for some of you, greeting people is hard. So if, if greeting people is hard for you, don't sign up to be a greeter. Sign up to do something. Because it's important that we serve others. I said it's important that we serve others, that we extend the hand of friendship and fellowship and love to others. People need you to do your part. And with that being said, I'll leave you alone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I got excited when I got up here because I thought uh, he left me some donuts. Thought he was being generous today. <laughs> um, before I release this in prayer, uh, two announcements. Child dedication is June 20th. Uh, and you can sign up at the Information Center. And just as a reminder, uh, the youth Bible study started today, um, and it will be held during first service um, by, with John McCullough down in uh, C, I can never remember the name of that classroom, C56, C57. It's the classroom at the end, so if you have a, a, a teen, um, you can have them come to Bible study, and they started it today. And um, I stepped in there just to see what's going on, and he was... He was getting deeper with them kids than Pastor get deep with us. I almost stayed in there. <laughs> no, but it's just just all jokes aside, though. He was doing a wonderful job in there. And it, I've never seen the teens here be glued to a message like they was down there this morning. And uh, so that's an encouraging and exciting thing that he's giving them that food that we get. Um, instead of just giving them uh, TikTok and and uh, Instagram and all that stuff. So that was a wonderful thing. But uh, let's, pray. let's pray and get out of here. Uh, Father, we just thank you for your word today. We just thank you for the love that you continue to show us, the guidance that you continue to give us. And all we have to do, Father, is receive it. All we have to do is make that commitment to live by your word, Father. So I ask that everybody here today take these words that we heard, apply them to our life, spread the love and the, and the message of God to someone that doesn't know you, Father. And Father, we just ask this in your, son, your son's holy name we pray. Amen. <laughs>